here we are. Week 7. The college football season is upon us, everyone. And what we have this week is a slate that looks a little bit light again on paper. But again, this week, you, just because you think this week is going to look, you know, kind of rough, does not mean there ain't no intrigue. And let me tell you, there's plenty of intrigue here. Plenty of it. And you get started on Friday night, going all the way until late. So that means we're going to have a recap after, you know, 1 a.m. again, you know. But I've highlighted six main games here. There are 18 top 25 games, you know, not... Not everybody's playing a top 25 opponent, obviously, and there are certain teams that are off this week. So a couple teams are off, you know, Coastal Carolina, SMU, Notre Dame. Um, those teams are off this week, Penn State, um, and Michigan State. Well, not, well, not Michigan State. I meant Michigan. Michigan. Ohio State. Those, two, those teams are off this week as well, and stay also off. So... We got plenty, we got plenty of interesting stuff here, and it's not just gonna be, you know, the same old stuff, you know, like it is, you know, you know, last week was insane, but this week gets even crazier. And we start on Friday night. Friday night is Cal, Oregon, and San Diego State, San Jose State. Now, Cal is not a good team. In fact, they are one and four. Um, the only reason that this game is significant is that CJ Burdell, he is done for the season. And that's what we found out during the bye week for Oregon is that Burdell is done. So now it's up to Anthony Brown and company to get it together. And Oregon, you know, there's number nine right now. And yet, there, there, there's still a chance for the Ducks to make it all the way to the college football playoff. And that hinges on a game we'll talk about in one of our highlighted six games. So, you know, it, it depends on a lot of things the Pac-12. And California just isn't going to be that type of statement win that the Ducks want. You know, they need to take care of business here with Cal. And hopefully get, get out of this game without any more injuries. Uh, San Diego State, San Jose State is going to kick off at the same time. It's a rivalry matchup. We all know this. San Jose State has not looked good this year. They won the Mountain West last year, but they got blasted by Colorado State um, last week. And they don't have Nick Starkle. Nick Starkle has been out with a injury, I believe it was like an arm, a shoulder injury or something like that, and Nick Nash is the quarterback now for the, for the right, for the time being at least. Not sure if Starko will return at any point, but Nick Nash has been the starter for the last couple games, based on what I've looked up for San Jose State. And Greg Bell, look out for that guy. He is a one of those backs for San for San Diego State that can run the ball very well. And San Diego State always been a strong run team the past decade or so. You know they've been a really strong run heavy team, and that looks to continue on Friday night. So let's get into Saturday. That's right, Saturday, noon Eastern. First we start off with UCF Cincinnati. A massively injured UCF team. Remember, Dillian Gabriel broke what is clavicle or something like that way back when against Louisville. And you know, this UCF team has been injured. They've struggled in games against East Carolina, Navy, um, you know, a not a not very good Louisville team, you know. You know I mean they they just have not looked good this year, you know. And, I mean, they're looking to gain momentum, some kind of momentum, as Cincinnati is probably still angry about something that we'll talk about later. But they don't need to focus on that. Cincinnati fans don't need to focus on that. They need to focus on beating UCF. And they need to focus on SMU as well. SMU was off this week, so we'll talk about that real quick here. Um, for SMU, you know, what... 
what Cincy wants is a good Notre Dame team and a good SMU team. You know, a Notre Dame team with one loss and an SMU team with no losses. And both of those things could come together for a meeting, you know, in November for Cincinnati. So who knows what will happen there. Um, but again, Cincinnati should take care of business here. Michigan State, Indiana, it's looking like, you know, the dark horse, a Heisman candidate. Kenneth Walker the third, that's right. I said dark horse Heisman contender. Walker has ran for over a thousand yards this year already. And this Indiana team has looked rough this year. It's it's the way the schedule has worked out for Indiana. It has not done them any favors. Penn State already, you know, Michigan. Ohio State, you know, coming up. Pet State already played them. Uh, I mean, this has just not been good for them. Iowa, too, yes. Cincinnati. So it's just not been a good year for Indiana. And, we'll, and this is the same type of story with Nebraska, you know. They've been playing good teams all year. Indiana has just, they just have not been able to get the momentum, capture the magic from 2020 into 2021. And Michael Penix is still injured. He's still injured. So it's looking like, you know, Peyton Thorne, Jalen Naylor, and the, the Dark Horse again, Kenneth Walker III, may be creeping up in a lot of people's eyes and ballots. But, I mean, it's been hard to watch Michigan State this year because of, you know, they haven't really played anybody significant yet. There was the Miami game early in the year, but I don't think I really watched that game for that long. So not, not a lot at all for Michigan State in my eyes. I haven't seen them play too much at all. Um, we'll skip over this one matchup here because it's one of my six. Auburn, Arkansas, it's Bo Nix, KJ Jefferson, and it's going to be a QB battle here. You know, Auburn, we all know now that Auburn is just an okay team. And now for Arkansas, it looks like, you know, 10-2 may be a possibility for them. I know, right? You know, maybe 10-2, 9-3. Um, probably leaning more towards 9-3 in all honesty. But, you know, the most difficult part of the schedule is over for the time being. Because, you know, Mississippi State, LSU, those two teams are coming up. And Auburn has not looked like a team that's competent out there the entire season. Um, so I, I don't I don't know here I don't know Florida LSU also at the same time you know these two games were held under six day holds you know Auburn Arkansas is going to be on you know CBS obviously Florida LSU ESPN and an 11 a.m. game for LSU and that's not going to get those Tigers happy and they're not happy with Ed Ogeron they're not happy with him at all like this team has regressed badly. Like, this team won the national championship not even two years ago. It wasn't even that long ago. Like, Florida, on the other hand, you know, what they need to do now is just focus on getting themselves together with Dan Mullen because I don't know if they're going to be able to win the East now. It's, it's unlikely. You know, they need Kentucky to lose three times. They need to beat Georgia, too. And they don't have an identity, you know, they don't have an identity to where they can, you know, get it together. But it looks like, you know, LSU has a bad run defense, so Florida maybe can just run all over them. We'll see what they can do. We'll see. I'm not going to be paying attention to this game at all, but I mean, you know, Florida, LSU, always a bit of rivalry. I mean, remember, the shoe game last year ended Florida's playoff hopes, you know. Texas A&M, Missouri. Texas A&M has found its way back into the top 25. Can they keep this momentum up? You know, this is a Missouri team that has a bad defense. This defense is awful. My alma mater, and I know there's another guy who's in the who's going to be in the comment section probably talking about this at some point. You know, my alma mater, North Texas, put up 35 points against this Missouri team. So, I I, I genuinely don't know. I genuinely don't know about this game. You know, A and M. You know, they don't have the offense. You know, that's really that great. But this offense shined last week. You know, against Alabama, 
So can they keep that momentum up, you know, with Calzada and company in store? And my first highlighted game of this week is Oklahoma State, Texas. You all knew this was coming. Texas has somehow managed to stay in the top 25. We all knew this was coming. I mean, I, I, I've said it for a couple weeks now. They're going to find, the, the polders are going to find a way, the pollsters are going to find a way to keep Texas in the top 25, even though they don't deserve it. Um, Auburn, you know, probably was the unlucky team here uh, for Texas A&M to get in, so it's rather unfortunate for them. But, Texas, it's time. The offense looks great, but this defense needs to rebound it. It's not it does not help things that Jalen Warren, running back for Oklahoma State, has been lighting it up this year. It does not help that he's been running like crazy this year. It does not help at all with this run defense. We got gashed by Kennedy Brooks. We got gashed by Max Duggan. We'll talk about him in a moment. You know, this Texas defense is atrocious, and you know, I'll, I'll talk about you know some other things here when involving Texas in a moment. Sark needs to get this team back on track. And Oklahoma State's just looking to stay undefeated. They, they are a dark horse for the playoff themselves. You know, they've been playing very well. Very solid defense. You know, can this Oklahoma State defense shut down the horns? You know, you know P. John's looking to get back into the Heisman discussion. You know, he's in the Heisman discussion, but they're not. They weren't talking about him that much on Saturday. They were talking about Texas's collapse more than what B. John did. You know, can can B. John Robinson get back into that Heisman discussion like that? You know, a performance against Oklahoma State goes a long way for the Horns because there's only really two tough tests remaining for the Longhorns, and all three for another team will be talking about the team they played. You know, last Saturday. You know, they have three tough matchups coming up, talking about Oklahoma, and, you know, for Texas, you know, again, there's three big matchups remaining for them, so, you know, they're going to have to get it together, otherwise it's going to be another full loss season in Big 12 play, and you don't want that, you do not want that at all. So let's move on to 3.30, these, there's not a lot here, there's not a lot here, there's three games in this 3.30 Eastern window. That you need to look out for. And two of them, two of them I have highlighted. We'll talk about Purdue Iowa first before we get to the others. Um, so Iowa is now number two in the country. We haven't seen you know a, a Iowa team you know rank that high in a long time. In fact, it was the year again Michigan State, the year Michigan State made the playoffs. And you know this is a Purdue team that is weird. Like this Purdue team lost to Minnesota. Who lost to Bowling Green, but they beat Oregon State, who is still technically, you know, what first in the, you know, they're still technically in the, uh, in in the race of the Pac-12 North, you know, right now, you know, but this is a, and that Oregon State team is actually pretty good, you know, they they have two losses though. Um, somebody was able to remind me, I was able to look that up last week. So Oregon State, you know, again, that's a good team. But Minnesota, not so much. So I don't know what kind of identity Purdue is. And Purdue hasn't beaten a top 10 team, a top 5 team since the 70s. So, you know, there could be some magic at play here. There could be some sort of magic coming on here. All right, let's get to the big ones. We all know what we came here for. Kentucky versus Georgia. Number 11, Kentucky, with Will Levis shining at quarterback. Kentucky's run game shining like a brilliant star. This Kentucky defense is the second best in the SEC behind Georgia. With And, you know, with Smoke and Rodriguez running the ball, it's legit for Kentucky. They have looked legitimate out here. And Georgia, for Georgia, they're a heavy favorite. And, you know, again, you know, people are probably going to say something like, well, Kentucky's going to get blown out. You know, don't say don't say that this is going to be a close game again, big boy sports. Don't say it again, Michael. Don't say it again. This game is going to be close. I'll tell you this right now. 
It's going to be a defensive battle. It's going to be a slugfest. Georgia is dealing with injuries. A lot of teams have been dealing with injuries that have been really plaguing them this year. And Georgia hasn't really felt the brunt of those injuries yet. They also haven't really felt the brunt of this QB controversy. You know, JT Daniels is still injured. He's still battling through an injury. And Stetson Bennett has played solid. But, you know... What is going to happen with this QB controversy? At some point, it's going to need to be addressed. And, you know, Kirby Smart has to get it. He has to get this Georgia team, you know, keep them focused. There's still tough tests remaining for Georgia. This, this is not a cakewalk like everybody thinks this is. And for Georgia to stay number one, that's all they got to do is keep moving forward. And you keep this defense at an elite level like it has been. The other big matchup is a angry, angry Baylor team who really desperately wants to get into the top 25. I mean, I don't blame them. They should be a top 25 team. And this is a guy we got to talk about, Gary Bohannon. Over a thousand yards already. No picks. 11 touchdowns. And they are going up against a BYU team that just got caught in the blender last week. They got caught in the blender and they got their fingers, you know, chopped up. This was a bad game for BYU. They really, they, they had some misfires and some mistakes, but this was a total disaster. The fumbles and the bad interception. Mostly the fumbles. That interception I can really wave off. But those three fumbles were critical last week for BYU. Can they clean that up? Can they clean that up? Can they clean, you know, you know, this BYU team? They're finally traveling out of the state of Utah for the first time in a long time. You know, they haven't played a game that hasn't been in Utah in quite some time since the Vegas game against Arizona. And they're flying all the way out to a future Big 12 foe in Baylor. So, Bohannon going to go up against, you know, Jaron Hall and Kalani Sataki and company. Again, this is still a good BYU team. Again, they're only number 19 for a reason. You know, again, there's, again, I, I said it in my recap that there's still plenty of time for BYU to get things together. And they can have a solid, solid season if they continue to do what they need to do. And this is a big-time matchup here. Big-time matchup in the 330 window. So keep your eyes on those two games right there. All right, let's move on to the 7 Eastern window here. TCU, Oklahoma, it's now time. It's now time for Lincoln Riley to figure out who the quarterback is going to be. We, I think we all know who it's going to be. But there's still probably some people in the Oklahoma spaces thinking that Spencer Rattler is the guy. Or, you know, he's probably not the guy anymore. I'm just going to assume that. We're all going to assume that. We're all going to say that. It's going to be Caleb Williams' time to shine, you know, with this Oklahoma offense. And now, Oklahoma has an inside track to make it look easy, but it's not going to be easy for Oklahoma. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I'm thinking that Oklahoma will have a loss this year, maybe even two. There's still plenty of time in the season to go. And if you don't think, if you don't think that, this is, that this is an easy fix, this is not an easy fix because this is an Oklahoma defense that still allowed 48 points to Texas. Still allowed 35 points and a bunch of rushing yards to a two-lane team that is what one in five now. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, that's not a good two-lane team right there. You know, despite the fact that Willie Fritz, you know, still is doing great things out there. You know, but I mean, this is not. This is not a number four team in the country. It's not. You know, but they're gonna be. They're gonna be at number four for right now. They're gonna be at number four, and this is. And this is a TCU team that has had ebbs and flows. They've ebbed at times, and they've flowed. And the flow has been beautiful at times. Max Duggan is a guy that can ball, and this TCU team can run it. Gary Patterson's always been a tricky foe 
for the Oklahoma Sooners always been tricky for the Sooners to play. You know, and it's gonna be no different on Saturday night. Gonna be no different, you know, on this Saturday night. Not gonna. This is not. This is not my bolded game, by the way. So, I mean, I'm just telling you, Oklahoma has to get it together if they want to say that they're a college ball playoff team. They're not right now. Nobody is. They have a glaring, glaring weakness that that needs to be fixed if they want to say they can tout themselves up as a team to beat. Because they're looking very, very beatable. And we all know somebody who's very, very beatable. That's right, Alabama. They're going up against Mississippi State, and Bama's defense has been a problem this year. I thought it was run defense at first, but I think it's just the defense overall. If Zach Calzada can pick this Bama defense apart, and Florida can run all over it, I think there's just problems all around. There's just problems all around for Alabama. You know, the play calling hasn't been good. I'm surprised. I forgot Bill O'Brien was even there as the OC for Bama. His play calling in the Texas A&M game was horrendous. You know, Robinson Jr., he, he's a good back. You know, Bryce Young, he's, a, he's an emerging freshman. You know, he's, he's thrown, what, 20 touchdowns, something like that already this year. But, I mean, it's the play calling that you know, can doom a team at times. It dooms everybody. It doomed Lane Kiffin against Alabama, you know, with Ole Miss, and it doomed Arkansas, you know, last week in a, I mean, again, it was the right play call. It was the right play to call to go for two, but do you go for two? It's always the risk of going for two, and I'll just state my piece on that, but Alabama has a defense that's just not good. And the key to stopping the defense, you know, that is not good, is somebody we've known for quite a while, Mike Leach. Oh boy, yeah, this is the same Mississippi State team that beat A&M with ball control air raid. And Will Rogers, a young quarterback. But ball control air raid is what beat Texas A&M the second time. I don't know what kind of strategy a madman has for Alabama. I really don't. Because it seems like Will Rogers has been emerging as a quarterback, you know, at times this season, despite the fact that Mississippi State has lost a couple times, but he's emerging. And this is a this is always the problem. This is always the problem. You know. I've seen it before with Mike Leach and I'll see it again. We've seen it with Mike Leach before this year, you know, this year, I mean, this again, this was an a and M team with high expectations. I said it a couple weeks back. a and M team with high expectations got ball control, you know, aerated by Mike Leach. Masterclass in coaching. LSU 2020. Masterclass in coaching. I'll go all the way back to 2008. Texas, Texas Tech, master class in how to be a highly ranked team. And Alabama, you know, they're number five right now. They at least the polls to say they're number five, but we all know they're probably not number five right now. You know, but I mean, come on, Alabama, they, if they want to win the West, they can't lose anymore because that that gives it to Ole Miss. And we all know the rest of the West has been beating up on each other. So, at, le at least for the time being, you know, it could give it the division, the SEC West, to Ole Miss if Alabama loses again. And that might happen. And we'll talk about Ole Miss right now here, actually. Ole Miss, Tennessee, no Manning cast. You know, people were calling for that. No Manning cast at all. And it's time for Lane Kiffin to get this defense together. I know Matt Corral continues to soar, and with both Henry Parrish and Jared Connor running the ball very well, of course you've got Miss Ole Miss receivers, you know, making plays. But I mean, again, Ole Miss is both running and passing the ball beautifully, and this is a Tennessee team that they cannot take lightly. 
Yes, this is a Tennessee team that has not played great competition, but Josh Heupel has, seems like he's finally gotten the kinks worked out. He took his spread system from UCF, and he brought another guy by the name of Hendon Hooker with him. Yes, he transferred from Virginia Tech. We all remember Hendon Hooker? Yeah, he started to play good in this offense. You know, again, Heupel's offense has been a speedy, fast, paced offense that likes to score points. And that's exactly what Tennessee's been doing. So we're going to have another high scoring game. This is actually my next uh, bolded game here. This is going to be a big one right here for number 13 Ole Miss. Again, there is a couple tough tests for you know, Ole Miss remaining, but this is a big one right here. This is a big one for the Rebels. They have to get past Tennessee. Who can score? And it's going to be another duel. I can guarantee you that. Please watch this game on Saturday night. It's going to be a duel. I can guarantee you that. We thought the Arkansas Ole Miss game was a duel. This might be first to 100 wins. Not first to 53, first to 100. Next up, next bolded game I have on my list. Yes, it's time to talk the ACC again. Yes, it's time to talk NC State Boston College. Yes, Devin Leary needs to play lights out like he did against Clemson. And yes, Boston College is using a backup in Grossel. He's been used for the last couple games, you know, as injuries uh, have continued to pile up. But this is a Boston College O-line has been elite this year. And Pat Garwell the third, I believe I'm saying his name right, he's been running behind this offensive line. I've read about this offensive line already for Boston College. And this ball this O line looks elite. Mm. Can't say that about a lot of O lines here in college football, but it looks like this Boston College O line is looking pretty good. And this should have been a ranked matchup, but again, Boston College blew it against Clemson last couple weeks ago, actually, a couple weeks ago. And it's rather unfortunate for them. So, again, NC State only has one loss, Boston College only has one loss, and they're looking to get, you know, the ACC back up some credibility because there's Wake Forest, who's undefeated, but they're off this week. And we'll talk about Wake Forest next week. So... Get prepared for that because October 23rd. Oh, I'm gonna be. Oh, I'm gonna be. Oh, oh, October 23rd is gonna be the best weekend of college football that I get to cover. Oh my goodness. Oh, but I'll save that for the October 23rd edition of you know my preview predictions and recap and stuff like that. But yeah, NC State Boston College is the fifth game I have highlighted here, and finally, last but certainly not least, in my analysis for this week, my preview and my predictions, you know, and stuff like that, is number 18 Arizona and Utah. And remember Utah got beat by BYU? Yeah, they jumped up and are 2-0 in the Pac-12 South, dismantling USC in the Coliseum. There was a couple of tragic deaths in the Utah program that they got over. And Cam Rising... I remember Cam Rising, right? Yeah, he's been playing pretty good. He's been playing pretty good out there. Yeah. Utah may be another team that looks legitimate in the Pac-12. We we can't again, we can't count out the Pac-12 just yet. You know, I, I, like I said, this, I'm not sure if Oregon plays both Arizona State and Utah, but I do know that this game in the Pac-12 South is going to be critical. And look to Tyler Johnson for the Sun Devils defense. You know, he was playing pretty good last week. In fact, he was named National Player of the Week, you know, last week. And Jade Daniels, he is continuing to play very, very good football. That's what you love to see, you know, for the fighting Herm Edwards and the Sun Devils. Another road game late for Arizona State. You know, it's unfortunate for them. But yeah, we have an interesting slate. That's my six. That's all the top 25 games this week. And, you know, week seven, it's going to be real. It's going to be raw. There's going to be more separation coming. And let's do this, guys. 
like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you very, very soon with more. Take care, everybody.